हाउ टू कैलकुलेट बॉन्ड एंगल वेल द रूल्स टू कैलकुलेट बॉन्ड एंगल आर द सेम एवरी वेयर बट आई विल टीच यू माई पर्सनल ट्रिक टू कैलकुलेट इट इन लेस देन अ मिनट सो वॉच दिस लेक्चर टिल द एंड एंड यू वेल लर्न समथिंग ऑसम फर्स्टली आई राइट द इम्पॉर्टेंट एलिमेंट्स ऑफ द पीरियोडिक टेबल विद दियर रिस्पेक्टिव ग्रुप नंबर रिमेंबर दैट द ग्रुप्स ऑफ दिस पीरियोडिक टेबल आर नंबर्ड अकॉर्डिंग टू रूमन नमेरल्स एंड वी नो दैट दियर आर एड ग्रुप्स प्रेजेंट एन एट हेयर फॉर द फर्स्ट थ्री ग्रुप्स ऑफ द पीरियोडिक टेबल आई राइट वन टू थ्री फॉर द सेवन सिक्स फिफ्थ एंड फोर्थ ग्रुप I write eight minus seven is equal to one. Eight minus six is equal to two. Eight minus five is equal to three, and eight minus four is equal to four. So this number represents the valency of each group. Now I will use my personal two formulae to calculate the bond angle. The first one is lone pair on a central atom is equal to. Group number of central atom minus valency of surrounding atoms. The second one is hybridization is equal to lone pair plus number of surrounding atoms. Now the first rule is if hybridization is sp, the angle will be one hundred eighty degree. If hybridization is sp two, the angle will be one hundred twenty degree. If hybridization is sp three. The angle will be hundred and nine point five degree. Now consider these two compounds and find that which has high bond angle. Firstly, I will find the lone pair of this compound. We know that lone pair of this compound is equal to the central atom is boron minus there are three chlorine atoms present in it. So I write three chlorine atoms. Now we know that the group number of boron is three. I write here three minus the valency of chlorine is one. I write three and two one. After calculation, I get zero electrons. So the lone pair is equal to zero. Thus, this compound has no lone pair of electrons. Now, what about its hybridization? I write. Hybridization is equal to lone pair on the central atom plus total number of surrounding atoms. This compound has zero lone pair of electrons. I write zero plus there are three surrounding atoms. I write three. Zero plus three is equal to three. This three means that there is one s orbital and there are two p orbitals. So I write. sp2 thus the hybridization of this compound is sp2 according to the rule if the hybridization is sp2 the angle is 120 degree on the other hand i calculate the lone pair on central atom we know that lone pair on central atom is equal to nitrogen minus 3 hydrogen the group number of nitrogen is 5 Minus three and two, the valency of hydrogen is one. After calculation, I get two electrons. So the lone pair is equal to one. Thus, this compound contains one lone pair of electrons. Now, what about its hybridization? I write hybridization is equal to the lone pair is one plus and the total number of surrounding atom is three. Now one plus three is equal to four. This four means that there is one s orbital and three p orbitals. So the hybridization of this compound is sp three. According to the rule, if hybridization is sp three, the angle will be one hundred nine point five degree. So the bond angle of this compound is one hundred twenty degree, and the bond angle of this compound is one hundred nine point five degree. So BCl3 has high bond angle than NH3. Secondly, consider these two compounds. We know that 
we have to find the lone pair on central atom. Lone pair on central atom is equal to the group number of carbon is 4, minus 2 and the valency of oxygen is 2. After calculation, I get 0 electrons. So the lone pair is equal to 0. Thus this compound has 0 lone pair of electron. Now what about its hybridization? I write lone pair plus surrounding atoms. The lone pair on central atom is 0 plus the surrounding atoms are 2. 0 plus 2 is equal to 2. This 2 means that there is one s orbital and one p orbital. So the hybridization of this compound is sp. According to the rule, if the hybridization is sp, the bond angle will be 180 degree. On the other hand, I write lone pair is equal to the central atom is carbon and its group number is 4 minus 4 and 2 the valency of hydrogen is 1. After calculation, I get 0 electrons. So the lone pair is 0. Now what about hybridization? I write hybridization is equal to the lone pair on central atom is 0 plus the total number of surrounding atoms is 4. 0 plus 4 is equal to 4. This 4 means that there is one s orbital and 3 p orbitals. According to the rule, if there is sp3 hybridization, the bond angle will be 109.5 degree. So we can see that carbon dioxide has greater angle than methane CH4. Thirdly, consider sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide. I write lone pair is equal to the group number of sulfur is 6 minus 2 and the valency of oxygen is 2. After calculation, I get 2 electrons. So the lone pair of electron is 1. Now I write hybridization. We know that the lone pair is 1 plus there are 2 surrounding atoms. I get 3. This 3 means that 1 is s orbital and 2 are p orbitals. We know that if there is sp2 hybridization, the bond angle will be 120 degree. On the other hand, I write lone pair is equal to the group number of sulfur is 6 minus 3 and the valency of oxygen is 2. I get 0 electrons. So the lone pair is 0. For hybridization, I write 0 because the lone pair is 0 plus the surrounding atoms are 3. I get 3. This 3 means that 1 is s orbital and 2 are p orbitals. We know that if hybridization is sp2, the bond angle will be 120 degree. Now here, the hybridization is same. I mean, sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide both have the same angle, which is 120 degree. In such cases, if the hybridization is same, we look at the lone pair of electrons. Let me repeat it. In such cases, if the hybridization is the same, we look at the lone pair of electrons. We can see that sulfur dioxide has one lone pair of electron, while sulfur trioxide has zero lone pair of electrons. Now listen carefully. If there is lone pair of electrons, it will exert greater repulsion due to which the bond angle decreases. For example, in sulfur dioxide, there is lone pair of electrons. It exerts greater repulsion force and bond angle decreases. So the second rule is, if there is lone pair of electron, bond angle will decrease. Sulfur dioxide has lone pair of electron, so it has smaller bond angle. Comparatively, sulfur trioxide has greater bond angle because it has no lone pair of electron. Thus note it down this second important rule. Now consider these ions. As usual, I find the lone pair of electron. The central atom is nitrogen 
and it is present in fifth group. I write five. This positive charge means that this ion has lost one electron. So I write minus one. Minus there are two atoms of oxygen. I write here two. The valency of oxygen is two. After calculation, I get zero electrons. So here the lone pair is zero. Now what about hybridization? Hybridization is equal to zero because the lone pair is zero plus there are two surrounding atoms. I get two. This two means that there is one s orbital and one p orbital. We know that if there is sp hybridization, the bond angle will be one hundred eighty degree. Now in case of this ion, I write lone pair is equal to the central atom is nitrogen and it is present in fifth group. This negative means that this ion has gained one electron. So I write here plus one minus there are two oxygen atoms and we know that the valency of oxygen is two. After calculation, I get two electrons. So there is one lone pair of electrons present in this ion. Now what about hybridization? I write there is one lone pair plus there are two surrounding atoms. I get three. This three means that there is one s orbital and two p orbitals. We know that if the hybridization is sp two, the bond angle will be one hundred twenty degree. In case of this ion. I find the lone pair of electron, which is equal to five. This negative sign means that this ion has gained one electron. So I write here plus one minus three. The valency of oxygen is two. After calculation, I get zero electrons. So this ion has zero lone pair of electron. Now what about hybridization? Hybridization is equal to zero lone pair of electrons. Plus three surrounding atoms. I get three. This three means that one is s orbital and two are p orbitals. We know that if the hybridization is sp two, the bond angle will be one hundred twenty degree. Now we can see that this N O two plus ion has one hundred eighty degree. So I write here N O two plus ion. These both ions have the same angle. Which is one hundred twenty degree, but wait a minute. This N O two negative ion has one lone pair of electron. According to the second rule, lone pair means smaller bond angle. N O two negative ion has smaller bond angle than N O three negative ion. So I write here N O three ion, then I write N O two ion. So this is the order of bond angles of these ions. Now consider these ions. Pause the video and try to solve them. Well, I write lone pair is equal to the central atom is chlorine, and it is present in seventh group. We know that this negative means it has gained one electron. I write plus one minus. There are four atoms, and we know that. The valency of oxygen is two. After calculation, I get zero electrons. So this compound contains no lone pair of electrons. Now for the hybridization of this compound, I write zero lone pair plus four surrounding atoms. I get four. This four means that one is s orbital and three are p orbitals. We know that. If there is sp3 hybridization, the bond angle will be 109.5 degree. On the other hand, I write lone pair of electron is equal to seven. This negative means it has gained one electron. I write plus one minus there are three atoms of oxygen, and we know that the valency of oxygen is two. After calculation, I get two electrons. So the lone pair of this compound is one. Now for hybridization, I write one lone pair plus three surrounding atoms. I get four. 
This 4 means sp3 hybridization and the angle will be 109 degree. While in case of this ion, I write lone pair of electron is equal to 7. This negative means plus 1. Minus there are 2 atoms of oxygen and the valency of oxygen is 2. After calculation, I get 4 electrons. 4 electrons means 2 lone pair of electrons. So this compound contains 2 lone pair of electrons. For hybridization, I write 2 lone pair of electrons plus 2 surrounding atoms. I get 4. 4 means sp3 hybridization and the angle will be 109.5 degree. We can see that all these 3 ions have the same angle which is 109.5 degree. According to the second rule, this ion contains 0 lone pair of electron and this ion contains 1 lone pair of electron and this ion contains 2 lone pair of electrons. We know that the greater the number of lone pair of electrons, the smaller will be the angle. So I write this ion because it has 0 lone pair of electron, then I write this ion because it has 1 lone pair of electron and then I write this ion because it has two lone pair of electrons. So this is the order of bond angles of these ions. Now consider BF3 and BCL3. As usual, I find the lone pair of electrons. The central atom is boron and it is present in third group. I write 3 minus, there are three surrounding atoms, the valency of fluorine is 1. After calculation, I get 0 electrons. So this compound contains 0 lone pair of electrons. Now for hybridization, I write 0 lone pair of electron plus 3 surrounding atoms. I get 3. 3 means sp2 hybridization and the angle will be 120 degree. For BCL3, I write lone pair of electron is equal to the group number is 3, minus 3 and 2, 1, because the valency of chlorine is 1. I get 0 electrons. So this compound contains 0 lone pair of electrons or no lone pair of electrons. Now for hybridization, I write 0 lone pair of electrons plus 3 surrounding atoms. I get 3. 3 means sp2 hybridization and the angle is 120 degree. Now listen carefully. Here the hybridization is same. I mean sp2 hybridization, sp2 hybridization, 120 angle and 120 angle. Secondly, the lone pair is also the same. I mean this compound contains no lone pair of electrons and this compound also contains no lone pair of electrons. Remember that in such cases, we will introduce the third rule. According to the third rule, if the central atom is the same and the surrounding atoms are different, then we will decide the bond angle according to the surrounding atoms. For example, if the surrounding atoms are different, then we will look at the electronegativity difference. If the surrounding atom is highly electronegative, then the bond angle will be smaller. Let me repeat it. If the surrounding atoms are highly electronegative, then the bond angle will be smaller. For example, here the central atom is boron, so I cancel it. Now the fight is between fluorine and chlorine. We know that fluorine is highly electronegative, while chlorine is less electronegative. According to the rule, if the surrounding atom is highly electronegative, then the bond angle will be smaller. So chlorine win the fight of bond angle. Thus BCL3 has higher bond angle than BF3. Now consider these compounds. Pause the video and try to solve them. Well, the lone pair of this compound is equal to the central atom is oxygen, I write 6 minus 2 into 1. I get 4 electrons. So the lone pair of electrons is 2. Now for hybridization, 
I write two lone pair of electrons plus two surrounding atoms, which is equal to four. This four means sp3 hybridization, and the bond angle will be 109 degree. For this compound, the lone pair of electron is equal to six minus two and to one. I get four electrons. The lone pair of electrons is equal to two. For hybridization, I write two lone pairs plus two surrounding atoms. I get four. Four means sp3 hybridization, and the bond angle is 109 degree. In case of this compound, I write lone pair is equal to six minus two and to one. I get four electrons. Four electrons means two lone pair of electrons. For hybridization, I write two lone pairs plus two surrounding atoms is equal to four. Four means sp3 hybridization, and the bond angle is 109.5 degree. We can see that these three compounds have the same hybridization, which is sp3, and they all have the same bond angle. Which is one hundred nine point five degree. So we will decide the bond angle according to the third rule. Here the central atom is the same, which is oxygen. So I cut the central atom. Now the fight is among fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. We know that fluorine is highly electronegative, while bromine is least electronegative. So fluorine has smaller bond angle and bromine has larger bond angle. Thus, this is the order of bond angles of these compounds. Now consider NH3 and PH3. As usual, I will find the lone pair of electrons. We know that nitrogen is the central atom and it is present in the fifth group. Minus there are three surrounding atoms and two. The valency of hydrogen is one. I get two electrons, so ammonia contains one lone pair of electron. For hybridization, I write one lone pair of electrons plus three surrounding atoms. I get four. Four means sp3 hybridization, and the bond angle is 109.5 degree. For PH3, I write lone pair of electron is equal to five minus three and to one. I get two electrons. The lone pair of electrons is one. For hybridization, I write one lone pair of electrons plus three surrounding atoms. I get four. Four means sp3 hybridization, and the bond angle is one hundred nine point five degree. Now listen carefully. Here, the central atom is nitrogen, while there, the central atom is phosphorus. Now listen carefully. The lone pair of electrons is the same. The hybridization is the same. While the central atom is nitrogen here, and there the central atom is phosphorus. So we cannot decide the bond angle of these co two compounds on the basis of third rule. So I introduce the fourth rule. If the surrounding atoms are the same, but central atom are different. Then we will decide according to the central atoms. Remember that in case of central atom, if electronegativity increases, bond angle also increases. Let me repeat it. In case of central atoms, if electronegativity increases, bond angle also increases. Here, the surrounding atoms are the same. I mean hydrogen. So I cancel them. Now the fight is between nitrogen and phosphorus. We know that nitrogen is highly electronegative, while phosphorus is less electronegative. According to the rule, high electronegativity means high bond angle. So nitrogen wins this fight. Thus NH3 has high bond angle than PH3. Now consider these two compounds. Pause the video. And try to solve them. Well, the lone pair is equal to the central atom is sulfur six minus two, and the valency of hydrogen is one. I get four electrons, are two lone pair of electrons. For hybridization, I write 
two lone pairs of electrons plus two surrounding atoms. I get four. Four means sp3 hybridization and the bond angle is 109.5 degree. In case of this compound, the lone pair of electron is equal to the central atom is selenium. And we know that it is present in the sixth group. Minus two and two one. I get four electrons. Four electrons means two lone pair of electrons. For hybridization, I write two lone pair of electrons plus two surrounding atoms. I get four. Four means sp3 hybridization and the bond angle is 109.5 degree. Now we can see that the hybridization is the same and the lone pair of electrons are also the same. According to the fourth rule, the surrounding atoms are the same. I mean the surrounding atoms are the hydrogen and I cancel them. Now the fight is between sulfur and selenium. Sulfur is highly electronegative, while selenium is less electronegative. According to the rule, if the central atom is highly electronegative, the bond angle will be high. So sulfur win this fight. Finally, let me teach you one exception case. Consider these two compounds. Now let me quickly find the lone pair and hybridization of these two compounds. We can see that these two compounds have the same hybridization which is sp3 and they both have two lone pair of electrons. So we will decide the bond angle according to the third rule. We can see that the central atoms are the same. I mean the central atoms are oxygen. So I cancel them. Now the fight is between chlorine and hydrogen. We know that chlorine is highly electronegative and hydrogen is less electronegative. According to the rule, if an atom has high electronegativity, its bond angle decreases. The electronegativity of chlorine is high, so it has smaller bond angle, while the electronegativity of hydrogen is low, so it has larger bond angle. So the order of bond angle is like this. But wait a minute. This is wrong order. I mean, OCl3 has high bond angle than water. So this is the correct order. It is because chlorine has larger size than hydrogen. I mean, consider the structure of OCl2 and H2O. We can see that chlorine has larger size. Due to larger size, the first chlorine strongly repel the second chlorine, due to which the distance between these two chlorine increases and bond angle also increases. On the other hand, the size of hydrogen is smaller. The first hydrogen exert smaller repulsion force on second hydrogen, due to which the size between them is smaller and the bond angle is also smaller. Therefore, we say that OCl2 has high bond angle than H2O. Thus, using this simple trick, we can easily calculate the bond angle of any compound.